The title of my sermon today is called, It's Time to Realign. And as I was kind of praying throughout this week of prayer and fasting, and God was kind of pressing on my heart to just talk about realignment, right? And again, as Pastor Roger was mentioning, there was a lot of breakthrough. There was a lot of great things that happened in people's lives throughout this past week and a lot of good just change and a lot of good alignment, right? And it's just a phenomenal time for us to be a part of what Bethel's doing and the direction that Bethel's going. But whenever I first heard the word realignment, my first thought, and probably a lot of your guys' thought, doesn't not necessarily go to spiritual realignment, you know, it probably goes to, you know, uh, realignment of your cars, realignment of your teeth, realignment of your finances, realignment of just so many things, and a lot of times realignments are really never fun, right? Because you got to get your teeth realigned, that's a dentist trip, that's no fun. You know, if you got to get your finances realigned, that means we got to believe, we got to, you know, cut some corners, we got to make some adjustments, we got to do some things, and a lot of times it is a progression, right? And this is what God kind of gave me is just a progression thought process with realignment, right? I have this story um, when I was growing up. I say growing up. I'm still really young. So, <laughs> but uh, as I was, uh, I say, as I was younger, and I am still young now, so I don't know where I'm at with this. You know, I'm kind of middle-aged, but I'm not middle-aged at all. I don't know where I'm at. So anyways, but uh, the first thing that came to my mind whenever realignment popped in my head is physical realignment, right? Because of, I have the story when I was growing up, I said growing up, but there it is again, right? Whenever I was younger, a couple of years ago, 10 years ago, I was working at a university and there are dorm rooms after dorm rooms after dorm rooms, buildings after buildings, and every dorm room has one of those micro fridges with like a re- microwave on top and they're about this big and about this tall and it's just I had to, we got donated a bunch of them, and so I was putting new ones in throughout the dorms, and so I was working, and I loaded up this refrigerator on the back of my cart, and I drove it around to the door, and I've probably been doing this now for about a month or two, just replacing refrigerator after refrigerator after refrigerator, just putting them in the dorm rooms, and it was during the summer, so it was pretty hot, and I've done this for like probably two or three, four days in a row of just loading refrigerators. That was just my job for that day or for that week. And so the last one is probably getting to the last building and I kind of reached over and I grabbed this thing like I've done so many times in the past and I squeezed it and when I squeezed it, my back said, no thank you and just gave out on me, right? I just, I've not felt that kind of pain ever. I was like, I'm young, what's going on? And I was just like walking like this to sit in my cart and I drove back and I said, hey, talking to my boss, I was like, I gotta go and see a chiropractor or whatever it is. I think I pulled my back out. And he's like, you're too young to do that. I was like, I know, I'm too young to do that, right? So I drove and I went to the chiropractor and he told me, he was like, hey man, your back is out of alignment. And I was like, what do you mean my back is out of alignment? He's like, well, what do you do for a living? I was like, well, I do a lot of physical labor. I uh, work out often. And he was like, but let me ask you this. He was like, when you work out often, he's like, do you stretch? And I was like, What's, just, what's stretching? And he was like, you know, stretching. I was like, I'm about as bendable as a piece of iron, my friend. I am not very flexible. And so I was just, it was just one of these experiences that I had. And he told me, he was like, if you don't continue to stretch and maintain your body and keep yourself aligned, he's like, you're going to run into this problem again and again and again and again, right? And so I was like, okay, whatever. I'm young though. So again, I obviously didn't listen. So I continued to do just whatever I did, right? And a couple weeks ago, maybe probably a couple months ago, my timelines the past four months with this baby is blurred in. But I, I, I went to reach down to pick up Oliver's car seat. And when I reached down and I grabbed it and I came up, my back in the same spot goes, no, thank you. And I was like, honey, you're gonna have to carry Oliver for the next week because I think I just pulled my back out again, right? And she was like, why, why, what happened? I was like, I just picked it up. I just did this little movement and it just, boop, and it was done. And I was like, ah, it was ridiculous. But again, it, after a week or so, it healed up and it was good. But like I said, so it was just one of those experiences that I've experienced that I realized, one of those experiences that I've experienced, sorry, one of those things that I've realized that whenever I think about alignment, whenever I think about being aligned, I started thinking about it and decided to look up like how to keep my body more aligned. And as I was reading these symptoms of being out of alignment, one of the first ones was fatigue. And then the second one was headaches. It was chronic headaches. And then the third one that I read was decreased mobility, right? And as I was reading these, I was like, wow, that can relate so well to my life spiritually, right? Because of how many of us, when we're not aligned with God, 
we get burnt out really fast, right? When we're not aligned with God and we're just going through the motions and we're doing things day after day after day, we get burnt out. Our hopes, our dreams, our aspirations, the things that we want to do begin to make us so tired, right? We get so burnt out that we decide that we don't want to achieve that goal anymore. And then the second one was chronic headaches. How many of us have tried to start a project, have tried to do something in our lives, and it was met with one headache after another? It just seemed like all odds were stacked against you, seemed like you weren't going to be able to complete what you wanted to do, whatever goal you had in mind just seemed unachievable because it was just so annoying to continue to go, all right? And the third one says decreased mobility, and this one kind of got me because I like being mobile. I don't have the microphone because I like to dance when I'm on stage, not really, but I like to be mobile on stage, and I like to move around, and when I have, you know, mics in my hand, I feel like restricted, but it, decreased mobility really got me, but when it got me, it also got me spiritually because decreased mobility is I stopped looking to pray. I stopped looking for God's wisdom. I stopped seeking things that I know that God would want me to seek to keep myself in alignment. And whenever I continued to do this, I began to realize that I just became very rigid. I became very straightforward. I became very like narrow in my thoughts. And I wasn't very flexible. I wasn't really accepting what God was bringing to me because it seemed out of my comfort zone. It seemed out of the designated plan that I have made particularly for myself. And that's where... I just was like, man, I really need to understand that alignment, not just physically but spiritually, is most important, and that it doesn't come with just a yearly kind of thing or a weekly kind of thing. A spiritual alignment is an every morning when you get up, you talk to God, and you ask. You're like, what do you, God, want me to do today, right? It's a little bit more than just going through the motions. is a little bit more than just thinking that I have this because I've done this. It's, God, what do you want for me today? What do you want for me to do for the people in my life today, right? It goes beyond just yourself because of, you know, if you're, you have a family, you know, it's more than just, God, what do you want me to do today? But God, what can I do today for my family? And it's asking every day and receiving what God is telling you. But when you have Headaches, when you have fatigue, when you have dis, um, when you have the um, decreased mobility, it really does hinder your ability to perform where God's asked you to perform. Because God brings us to a level above than what we can imagine, right? But when we begin to do it ourselves, we have that lack of mobility and that lack of what God's asked us, right? So let me ask you this question here: um, How many of us have ever? And this is gonna be a rhetorical question, but how many of us have ever? you know, started praying. You're like, I, I do pray every day. I do do this. I, I talk to God, but, you know, when you talk to God, I haven't been hearing him for a while. Like, why, why haven't I been hearing him, right? Or, you know, you come to worship, and you listen to worship music in the car, and you're like, I don't feel the same that I felt when I started my journey, or when I started this, this, this goal that God has set me on. Why don't I feel the same anymore? Or even to a more detrimental sense of, like, have you ever fasted and prayed before and you were like, I've had breakthrough when I fasted before, but why am I not having breakthrough now, right? Why haven't I had breakthrough during this, this time of my life? And the thing is, is God is always constantly moving in our lives, but when we are not aligned with him, we miss out on what he has for us. I'm gonna say that one more time. It says when God, or God is constantly moving in our lives, but when we are not aligned with him, we miss out on what he has for us, right? And so keeping ourselves in alignment and staying aligned with God constantly is one of those aspects in our lives that can slowly, you know, tear off. It can slowly diminish, but we don't realize it because of we're just adjusted, because of we just get comfortable. But we have to daily, on the daily, ask God, what do you need from me? Align ourselves morning by morning by morning, even maybe by morning, by afternoon, by dinner sometimes in situations. We have to ask God, what do you want from me right now? Whenever I think about unalignment, I think about King Saul. And in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 14, oh, I'm sorry, in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1, God anoints Saul. And this is what it says. It says, then Samuel, who is the prophet of the time, took a small container of olive oil and poured it in onto Saul's head. Samuel kissed him and said, the Lord has chosen you to lead his people Israel. You will rule over the Lord's people and you will deliver them from the powers of the enemies who surround them. 
the Israelites were being attacked constantly, and God has been continuously sending people to watch over them and continuously sending people to deliver them from the enemy, right? And Saul, for 30, 40 years of his kingship, did what God asked him to do. And as he did what God asked him to do, God provided every time. And as God provided for him, I believe what may have happened is he began to assume that he knew what he was doing. He began to assume that he knew what to do. He started thinking to himself, well, I have a whole army. I have a whole kingdom. I've had people telling me how great I am. And because of this, I know, and that's the issue, is I know what to do, right? So three chapters later, they kind of sum up 30, 40 years of kingship in three chapters. And in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 14, it says, but now your kingdom shall not endure. The Lord has sought himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has appointed him ruler over his people because you have not kept what the Lord has commanded you, right? And later we find out in that verse, it says that God has appointed a man after his own heart. We find out that that's King David. But before that happens, Saul goes through this, this tragic journey afterwards. He becomes jealous. And one of the issues that I believe that Saul creates with, for himself is assumptions. And it is, in one of these quotes that I have, it says, assumptions danger our capacity to relate to others, right? And in Saul's, in, in Saul's situation, I believe it damaged his capacity to relate to God, he began to assume what God would do. He began to assume what he thinks he should do. He began to, to seek counsel in different areas of his life and not with God. And when that began to happen, he damaged his ability to relate to God. And he got so far off the course that God appointed another man, King David, to be the king over Israel. But Saul wasn't sitting well with that because he was like, I've been the king for 30, 40 years, so why, why have you taking that away from me. And so he becomes jealous of King David, and he actually attacked times. And yet God still provided for David and didn't allow that to happen, right? But again, our assumptions always lead to an issue that sometimes leads us really far off the path. I mean, husbands, wives, you know, uh, brothers, sisters, friends, families, things like that. If you ever assume that somebody's in a good position and then it turns out a couple weeks later that they weren't, but you assumed without asking, then I feel like it, it, it built a distrust, it built an issue that could have been resolved if there wasn't an assumption that was placed, right? So assumption damages our ability to relate with others in our lives, but also it can damage our ability to relate with God whenever he's trying to tell us something to do, right? I have this buddy of mine who used to go deep sea fishing a lot. He would go out to Galveston and he would get on the Gulf of Mexico and, and sail out. I almost said drive out, but he'd sail out to an oil rig and they would go deep sea fishing. He's invited me, but I'm not much of a fisherman. I wouldn't say I wouldn't go fishing, but it just seemed like a whole day's worth of things that I just was not down for. And so they went out there and they were sitting there on the boat and, or sorry, yeah, they're sitting on the boat and they were like, driving out. I almost said flying out, man. They were driving out, sailing out, and he put in the coordinates and they do this like on a weekly basis, other bi-weekly basis, whatever it is. And as they were sailing on the boat, they were like, man, like where, where's this oil rig? We've been to it like many times and we've fished here many times. Like where is this oil rig, right? And so they, they kept going, they kept going about 45 minutes into it. They're like, we would have seen it by now. We've done this a million times. We would have already been there, or at least seen the distance. And so about 15 minutes later, he's like, all right, that's it. And he went down to the boat and he, he began to look and he realized that he typed the coordinates in wrong. And when he typed the coordinates in it wrong, he just assumed, I've done this so many times before, he typed the coordinates in and hit the button, but he missed it. And instead of double checking, instead of looking again, he realized that they were degrees and degrees off, and that small degrees off that they were sent them like miles away from their destination. And so they weren't able to go deep sea fishing, and so they came back and like, well, that was a bust. But it was something that they learned that just assuming in those kinds of situations may not always be the best in that case, right? So earlier I was telling you guys that <clears throat> David is a man after God's own heart. And when we think about man after God's own heart, God specifically said that I have chosen a man after my own heart. And you'd sit there and you'd think to yourself, you're like, that is an impressive title. That is a title that God just gave him. And so you would think that this man is perfect. You'd think that this man is like sinless. You would think that this man is above and beyond. But the thing is, as we find out later in the Bible that David isn't a man necessarily of the best, but in 
a story that I have for him before all of that happens in his life, he obeys God and he listens to God and it literally says that he is a warrior, right? And not necessarily just a warrior as in a person who fights, but also a warrior for God because of he obeys what God says, he does what God tells him to do, and he is just so obedient. But in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 2, verses 17 through 19, I think I have that one up there. So there it is, right there. It says, when the Philistines heard that David had be, has been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force and searched for him. But David heard about it, and when he did, he ran down to his stronghold, and the Philistines had spread themselves out within the valley. And when they spread themselves out in the valley, and he ran down to the fortress, the first thing that David did when he got down to the fortress is said, David inquired the Lord. He talked to God. The first situation, whenever it got hectic, is he didn't just, okay, well, I have an army. Let me go fight. Oh, I have an army. Let me just do what I think I know to do. No, he stopped, and he talked to God. And when he spoke to God, God told him, what he could do. And this is what God tells him. He says, go ahead and fight, and I will deliver you from the hands of the enemies. And when I deliver you from the hands of the enemies, you will prevail over the Philistines, right? So David did exactly what God told him to do, and he was delivered from the hands of the Philistines in that moment. But then right after, it says the Philistines once again came up and spread without in the valley. So David inquired the Lord again. That was the thing is, They just attacked. The enemy just did the exact same thing that they did. But instead of David assuming, well, I'm just going to attack them like I just attacked them, he didn't assume. And so he goes to the Lord, and he asks the Lord, and the Lord answered him. and says, do not go straight up this time, but circle around behind them and attack them from the front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of the marching and the tops of the poplar trees, move quickly, because that will mean that the Lord has gone in front of you and struck down the Philistine army. So David did as the Lord commanded, and he struck down the Philistines all the way from one location to the other. And that means that David could have just assumed to do the exact same thing that he's always known to do, but instead, he chose to listen to God and do what God told him to do. And the thing is, is God will tell us to do things differently, and it may sound outrageous to us sometimes, but the reason why is, for one, God's looking for obedience, but also God's looking to protect us, and God knows what's best for us in that specific situation. Because again, assumption really can lead to a lot of damaging things, right? And as I was talking to you guys before about David being a man after God's own heart, later on in the chapters, David does mess up, and as you read, he becomes an adulteress, he becomes a murderer, he becomes a liar, But the thing is, is he was still a man after God's own heart because of even though all that was happening, God, he still obeyed day in and day out. He still inquired to the Lord day in and day out and asking God, what do you want me to do? And back in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, it says, and it says that you have not kept my commandments, Saul. That is why I have appointed somebody else because you haven't kept my commandments. But David continued day in and day out to keep the Lord's commandments, right? A man after God's own heart doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be perfect. A man after God's own heart means that we're going to sit back and we're going to listen to God and we're going to obey God in all situations, not just a few of them, not just some of them, but in all of them, right? Because before we can have achievement, we have to have alignment, right? Alignment before achievement. I want that resonate just a little bit because I'm kind of getting parched, so I'm going to drink this water. But think about it. Alignment before achievement. When we begin to constantly align ourselves with God, we can achieve anything because when God is on our side, we know that he's going to do above and beyond what we could ever ask, think, or imagine, right? Right? been talking about alignment and constant realignment. And the thing is, with constant realignment, again, it it can be drastic changes, but a lot of times it's small changes. It's those small things to get us back where we were. Because of earlier when I was talking about decreased mobility, if you are out of alignment that bad to the point where your mobility is decreased, those large extra movements could probably damage you even more, but it's those small increment building yourself up, asking God to build you up to get where you need to be, to be in full alignment with God. And before we can achieve 
we have to align. And the thing is, is you're saying you're probably people are thinking to themselves like, okay, well, with that alignment, well, I've achieved a lot of great things in my life. Okay, but have you achieved what God has asked for you of your life? That's the question. It's sure, you could have fancy cars, you could have nice houses, you could have the best business, you could have all of these great things, but the first thing you have to ask yourself is this is what is this what God wanted for me? Is this what I wanted for me? Right? We have to align ourselves before we can achieve what God has asked us to do for his kingdom. It's more than just, again, within our lives, but for his kingdom. It's a little bit greater than that, right? So I've been talking about constant alignment. So I have three different points for you guys that I uh, believe that are going to help keep within constant alignment. And the first one is seek. The second one is to humble. And the third one is to acknowledge. And the first one I said is seek. We are to seek him first. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6 that we are to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. We are to seek God constantly, and we are to seek him first. That is the most important aspect of that verse, in my opinion, is seeking God first, not second, not whenever we feel like we have to seek him, not whenever we find it convenient. No, it's in all things that we do, seek him first and seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and God's righteousness. Not our righteousness, not what we think that is gonna make us righteous. No, what God's righteousness is. And it literally says right after that, that all these things will be given to you. The things that God has planned for your purpose, the things that God has for your life will be given to you when we align ourselves with God and we seek him. The second one is humble. Humble is a very small word, but it has a very deep meaning. And it's one of those meanings that kind of goes against the grain of almost human nature because human nature without God likes to go selfish, likes to go prideful, likes to go singular, likes to think for myself only. But when we humble ourselves before the Lord, then God can move through us, right? When we humble ourselves before the Lord and we understand that what we want isn't greater than what God has for us, then we have the ability to move. And it says in James chapter four, it says, humble ourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. It says that God will lift you up. The only person that we need or the only being that we need to lift us up through our problems and through our issues is God. God is the one who will take us through those valleys, will take us through the enemy of our life at that point in time. He will lift us up through those situations of our lives that seem unbearable, that seem um, almost unattainable, right? But because we humble ourselves before God, he will lift us up. And when he does, it is going to be greater than what we could ever think or imagine, right? And the third one I have, so the first one was seek first, the second one is humble, and the third one is acknowledge. And we are to acknowledge that God's ways are always greater than our ways, right? It says in Isaiah that God states, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts, Right? We have to understand that when God has a plan for our lives, that is what he wants for us. And what he wants for us is greater than, we want, than what we want for ourselves. And sometimes it's a, ch- a tough pill to chew to understand. It's like, well, I've been doing this, I've been doing that, and I've done this and I've done that. But the issue is, is it's the I've done this, I've done that, I am in charge, I am doing. When it becomes God needs to be doing, God needs to be moving. Earlier I stated that God is always moving in our lives, but when we're not aligned with him, we miss out on what he's doing, right? Whenever we begin to think to ourselves that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, we're going to miss out on a blessing beyond comprehension when we don't put him first, right? So the three that I had for you guys was to seek, to humble, and to acknowledge. And acknowledging always needs to come with humbling and acknowledge and humbling need to come with seeking him. The thing is, is a lot of us, whenever we're becoming unaligned with God, we begin to move further and further away, and those those tactics, those ideas that we use to be able to realign ourselves is to begin to seek him, to be able to humble ourselves, and to be able to acknowledge him. And that's that's whenever we begin to see that breakthrough. That's whenever we begin to see God move, is because when he's beginning to move in our lives, that's whenever we know we're with God. When we begin to see God move, that's the important part. Seeing God move is where we need to be. We need to be constantly seeing God moving in our lives because we need to stay constantly aligned with him. 
And when we stay constantly in line with him, he gives us more and greater things, right? This is right here where it says, you can achieve greater things when you are aligned with God. Again, achievement before, or alignment before achievement. Where are you guys at with what you're thinking? I want to ask the worship team to come up onto the stage and prepare for, I guess, the closing out on it. But my question for you guys and my challenge for you guys is, like, where are you guys at with your alignment in God? You know, the thing is, sometimes we don't realize how far off we are from God. You know, sometimes we think to ourselves, well, yeah, I pray every day, but I'm not seeing breakthrough. Well, maybe it's time to potentially take a step back and align ourselves with God. Maybe when you take that step back, you'll realize that, okay, maybe that was a me thing and not a God thing, right? Because he is greater than I and not just I physically, but what I also want. Because what he wants is going to be more effective for your family. What he wants is going to be more effective for you. What he wants is going to be more effective in your relationships because of God knows better, because God is great. So take a step back this morning and see where your alignment is with God. Are you spiritually aligned with God? Are you where you need to be for God to move in your life? And as I pray this out and the worship team ends the service, I just want to thank you, God, for who you are. I just want to thank you, Lord God, that you've brought us here today to be able to hear this sermon, Lord God. I just pray that you will just continue to help us realign where we need to realign, Lord God, that we will take a step back and know that you have a better plan than what we could ever think or imagine, Lord God. We just thank you so much for the love you have for us and the fact that you forgive us and forgive us and forgive us and you take us back every time, Lord God. We just thank you and love you, and I just pray for a realignment in our lives spiritually, Lord God, so that you can move within us. We praise you and love you in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.